Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. And for our Daily Word today, we are in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 35. I want to share verses 12 to 16 with you. And then let's, let's talk uh, about what it is that we are obeying. Then the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, Come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. The Rechabites do not drink wine to this day because their ancestor uh, Jehonadab told them not to. But I have spoken to you again and again, and you refuse to obey me. Time after time I sent you prophets who told you, Turn from your wicked ways and start doing things right. Stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land, the land I have given you and your ancestors, that you would not listen to me or obey me. The descendants of Jehonadab, son of Rechab, have obeyed their ancestor completely, but you have refused to listen to me. So the God, God uses the Rechabites um, as a lesson in obedience, and man, it is a, it is a strong lesson. Uh, their ancestor, Jehonadab, he, he kind of set the sort of family precedent. He was the patriarch of the family, and he, he said, you know, we're going to remain as a family. This is who we are. We're going to remain as a nomadic people. So likely they... Uh, they herded animals, and they, they weren't going to settle into towns. They weren't going to have homes. They would live in, in tents, and, and that would keep them separate. Uh, that would re retain their identity, and so they listened to that, of course, and as we read. And then also, they are people who, who don't drink wine. Now, we don't know what the origin of that is exactly, but, but the thing about this is, is that they, these are not divine commands. The, these are just the, the thoughts and practices of, of an ancestor. And yet, to honor him, to honor their heritage, they, they obey these things. Um, now, the people of God, on the other hand, the Lord points out, the people of Judah and Jerusalem will not, they refuse to obey God, even though he's not just an ancestor, he's not just a family member, he's not just a respected person, he is the Lord God Almighty. They do not honor Him. They don't honor their calling or their heritage, though they are called by God Himself. But here's the other thing, and I think this is where it connects with, with where we are, and, and the Lord perhaps uh, will bring a, a conviction over, over each of us, because the, the truth is that we're all obeying something. There is something that is controlling what we do. For them, it was obeying false gods, sacrificing to false gods. It was obeying false prophets and false priests. But really behind all of that, behind all of that was that they were obeying the desires of their flesh. They were, they were being obedient to their own desires, their selfishness, their, their pride. They, they believed that worshiping these other gods, giving sacrifice to these other gods, would get them what they want, would win them some favor and perhaps would get them some gain. The false leaders, they simply would tell the people exactly what they wanted to hear. Everything is just fine. There's no need to worry. God will never punish us. God will never, uh, not, never forsake his temple or Jerusalem and so forth. But, but in truth, in truth, they are slaves to sin. The Lord Jesus says that all who sin are slaves to sin. That is, they, they, we, obey the desires of the flesh, the desires for sin. We obey our pride. So we have to ask ourselves, what is, what is it that is controlling us? What, is, what am I obeying? Is it the Word of God? Is it the Spirit of the living God? Or is it the desires of the flesh? We live now, friends, in a culture that truly is demanding conformity. Conformity of belief and conformity of obedience. So obedience to a set of, of cultural beliefs and, and practices. And, 
And so the question then is, will we obey God or man? I, I couldn't help but think about this event that happens after, it's after the ascension of Jesus, it's after the birth of the church, and uh, this is in Acts chapter 5 as the disciples are, are teaching the, those who are coming to, to faith and, and they're sharing the gospel and, and the gospel is beginning to spread uh, there. We, we find that they're, they're brought before the Sanhedrin, before the religious officials, and, and those, those folks order them. They threaten them. They, they order them never to speak of the name of Jesus Christ. And this is Acts chapter 5, verse 29 through uh, verse 32. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who is given by God to those who obey Him. And so, friends, we are called then to repent of our sin, that is to repent of the ways in which we have disobeyed, rebelled against God, and to place our lives in the hands of our Savior who is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, who is seated on the throne, who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. To belong to Jesus is to submit to Him, to obey His Word, to obey the, the leading, the prompting of the Holy Spirit as He leads us into what is truly life, as He leads us into our mission, our calling, our ministry, how He is prepared good works in advance for us to do, how the Lord is really making a masterpiece out of our lives as He is working out His purposes for us. So let us endeavor then, friends, to obey the Lord. No, no human authority, no human authority above Him, certainly not our desires, our pride above Him, but Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives. In His name we pray. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.